and it's a race to see if we can who's going to finish in the top two spaces. Hopefully, we can show them that our our quality can win enough points to finish top. Papin Rose win the first 45 minutes. We're going to Athletic win the second 45 minutes. Football's a funny old game. Four goal thriller at Ewood Park. On as even at the top of the league. We'll talk about the match and more on today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review. This time picking apart Blackburn Rovers' last match up against fellow promotion chasers Wigan Athletic. Honours even, 2-2. Two, two. We'll talk about the match in just one second. If you're new, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Yes, it was a completely contrasting two 45-minute halves. Rovers going 2-0 up within the first 17 minutes. And they looked quite comfortable going into the break before Wigan came out guns blazing second half and they got two quick fire goals in the middle of the park first on the score sheet was Adam Armstrong on six minutes a lot of great build-up play uh, ended up sliding it through to uh, Armstrong cool as you like puts it past the Wigan keeper next up it was Elliot Bennett on the 17th minute a lot of hard work done by Bradley Dack who has been influential throughout the game uh, he eventually set up Bennett with a beautiful beautiful pass if you haven't seen the highlights uh, make sure you do so because that pass was sublime Bennett did the hard work at the end tucked it away past the keeper and at that point again it looked comfortable for Rovers they were definitely the most dominant force in the first half of the game but like I said in the intro football is a strange old game it's two uh, goals early on in the second half Jacobs on the 63rd minute and another on the 73rd minute from Max Power from a free kick got a bit lucky I think with uh, getting the free kick uh, and he also got a bit lucky with the actual free kick. So, uh, honours even. And if, and if uh, you had offered me that at the start of the match, before kickoff, I probably would have taken it. But uh, coming in at half time, you were thinking maybe Rovers can uh, put three or four past Wigan. But that was not meant to be. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics. This is how BBC ranked it. And uh, as you can tell, game of two halves 50 50 percent possession on each side rose with eight shots wigan had nine uh rose had five tar on target uh wigan had three three corners apiece uh, and the fouls pretty even as well 19 to 17. so let's take a look at the start 11 first and foremost the host blackburn rovers ryan gold naimbi lanahan mulgrew williams evans smallwood dak bennett armstrong and Graham Evans getting the nod over Payne, which, to, in all fairness, I'd agree with that prior to kickoff. So let's take a look at the match ratings, and here's how I ranked the starting eleven: Ryan and Goal with five, Naimbi with a six, Lenahan with a seven, Morgan with a six, Williams with a six, Evans with a five, Small with a six, uh, Bradley Dak man of the match with an eight, Elliot Bennett with a seven, Armstrong with a six, and Danny Graham with a seven. Uh, again, yeah, there are some uh, suspect numbers out there. That's how I. That's, that's just my opinion. Obviously, Adam Armstrong with the crucial goal first and foremost. I know he gets a six, but after that goal, uh, there was hard. There wasn't too much uh, going right for him. And also the defensive midfield spots of Evans and Smallwood. Evans didn't really get himself into the game, and I saw he, he did make a couple of uh, woeful passes. Uh, the full back, in fact, the whole defensive line bar Lenahan. I thought Lenahan was, you know, he would have had an eight. Or maybe even a nine if we had come away with all three points. Uh, in fact, there was it was such a great performance first half. And even in the early stages of the second half, Lenahan looked commanding. Raya had nothing to do, hence the five. And when he was called upon, you know, we didn't really get much much joy from him. Uh, Bennett in a, in a more attacking role today. Uh, he obviously got the goal and he did run his socks off once again. Um, so, yeah, a very, a very uh, topsy-turvy performance from Rovers. Because if I had given my halftime rankings, I'm sure there would be a lot of eights and nines across the board. But, you know, second half came and went, and uh, we're going to come away with a point. This is how Wigan lined up. Walton and goal. Bryn, Dunkley, Byrne, Elder, Morsi, Power, Massey, Powell, Jacobs, and Grigg. A lot of tongue twisters in there. So Wigan are up there for a reason, and today was just a prime example of that. They could have rolled over and given up at halftime, but they come out fighting, and deservedly... You know, if I'm honest, they did, you know they, they they bagged the point, which was was which was fair dues. So the attention switches now back to Shrewsbury and Wigan, who do have games in hand on Blackburn Rovers, and if they do win those games in hand, the top of the table will look a lot different than it does today. We are currently top of the pops, and we are five points clear of Shrewsbury, but they do have two games in hand. So technically, that's six points in the offering for Shrewsbury, but they have to win them before uh, 
before we get going. So let's take a look at the rundowns of the teams involved in the top two uh, promotion places. Uh, this is how Blackburn's next fixtures look like. Blackpool next, then Gillingham away, Doncaster away, before a real tricky tie back at Ewood Park against Bradford City under a new management. As for Shrewsbury, currently find themselves in second. Their next match was supposed to be Peterborough, uh, but it's probably going to be the Shrewsbury Yeovil Town Football League Trophy semi final. Uh, so they've got, they've got a possibility of a trip down to Wembley for themselves. But the next league game is on Saturday against Walsall at home. Walsall uh, on the back of a nice victory uh, yesterday. We'll talk more about that later. And they also got a nice tasty encounter up against Scunthorpe United uh, uh, the, the weekend after. And that's at their place. So it's actually a few tricky games. Uh, where they could stumble Bradford City further down the calendar and also another a clash up against Charlton who they recently beat at the Valley. Let's take a look at Wiggins. They've got a lot of fixtures still to cram in. Their next match is up against fifth place Scunthorpe. Uh, maybe ho hopefully they might stumble a little bit there but then they take on Bradford City away. So two potential banana skins and again they've got uh, games all over the place uh, to make up for uh, those four games that uh, they trail us by. And further down the table, Rotherham United uh, sneakingly into the top two consideration. Their next opponent is Rochdale at home before taking on MK Dons on the Tuesday. And they also have two games in hand on Blackburn. Now you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. What did the gaffer have to say shortly after the final whistle? I said, we obviously let the game slip through our fingers, didn't we? We were from being in control, scoring two fantastic goals, dominating the game. You know, sometimes you can dominate a game without the ball. I think I think we're different types of teams. I think they're a possession oriented team, and we're a power and breaking and, and transitional team. And um, and that obviously came out on top first half. And I don't I don't necessarily think the possession came out on top second half. I think we just shot ourselves in the foot with the nature of the goals we lost, really. And that's something that we have to tidy up. Yeah, yeah. Listen, as I've said here before, the, the players the players are very focused and very, you know, driving this team. And um, we talked at half time about making sure that we didn't sit on our laurels, didn't sit back and invite pressure from a decent team. And, and we started really well, as you're saying. In an ideal world, you get the third goal and the game's finished, but um, didn't quite happen for us. Um, this gives them some credit. They're a, they're a good football team. They've got some good players. I try not to give them too much credit before the game, but after the game, I think I think they've got some good footballers. Um, but um, listen, it feels like a defeat. We have to take the, the, the confidence of knowing that we more than match Wigan, and um, and it's a race to see if we can who's going to finish in the top two spaces. Hopefully, we can show them that our our quality can win enough points to finish top. Both, I would suggest it's it's a good ball into a good area. I, I thought initially that Elliot had missed it, and he, so we have a man killing that near post space. It's actually gone over his head and dipped right into the six-yard box. My, my my grievance against is where's, where's the defenders who've got to make first contact. We talk a lot about making first contact on set players against, and uh, somebody should be putting their boot on that and clearing it. And um, everybody's probably marking their men and and. and um, stopping them getting contact with the ball and the ball just bounces straight through and into the net and um, somebody should have had the instinct to put the boot on the ball really and clear it but but never mind listen it's done now let's uh, not criticise the team I thought they worked fantastically hard I thought they showed how much they cared about what we're trying to achieve this year and um, and let's keep going next week's another big game yeah, so what we talked a lot, a lot about that we talked in the team meeting this, today, but we'd done some work in the last. We we actually trained on the pitch yesterday, and we did some work on on that sort of transition. And um, yeah, listen, that's why you pick Armstrong in the team because he's got that simple pace. You have Dak who can bring the quality and the guile. You've got Graham who gives you the strength. And you know, if it's not Armstrong, it, it would be you know Harry Chapman is going to start training this week. Um, and Tonneson, you know, it's it's that type of footballer who can be incisive and running behind teams. You need that element as well. And I think the balance of the team was all right today. It, um, so yeah, lo lots of positives. Let's let's keep going. Let's um, look at the next game with real positivity and believe that we can beat anybody on our day. And we have to have ten big days from now until. May the whatever it is, fifth or seventh or something like that. Well, listen, I, I think the referee had a game plan to be honest. I think he, he came in, you saw at the start of the game, there was a lot of ferocious, ferocious tackles early on and a lot of real competitive edge to the game, yet he didn't blow his whistle for the first 20 minutes. And then I, I think he tried to calm it down, but then he started booking people willy nilly. And um, 
I, f I figured somebody was going to get sent off, but in his mind, he, he didn't just he didn't he didn't referee the game that was going on in front of him. He had a game plan and he tried to stick to it, and it and it, and it caused him problems in the end. I think, and this, we stand here now talking about his decisions because I, I don't think he just managed the game and uh, that he saw. I don't know. They've been winning games all season. You know what I do know is their congestion is going to hit some stage. We just have to win our football matches, and you know we have to win because if we if we keep. If we drop points along the way and they keep winning, it's it's going to be a frustrating, disappointing end to the season. But it's, that said, it might not be because any team who finishes in the playoffs has got to believe that they're going to win it. We we have to believe that we're going to finish first or second. I think the evidence today that we believe we can finish above Wigan, we believe we we beat Shrewsbury out here, we believe we can finish above Shrewsbury, and uh, we have to prove it on the grass starting next next week against uh, against Blackpool. Now you've heard what the gaffer said to say. What's the fans been saying on social media? Let's take a look. Northern Rover. Gah! Wigan deserve the point as we grimly hug on in the second half. We just have a habit of giving away soft goals, which might end up costing us at the end of the season. Meanwhile, talk of Ewood. Feels like a defeat the way it happened, but at the start, they would have taken a point. Uh, title race is still on. Thought subs let us down today. Should have brought one on under the cosh at 2-0. And then... And when we did bring them on, they didn't really fill me up with confidence. I agree with you there, Talk of Ewood. A lot of, uh, of lacklustre performances in the second half. Not just at the start and level, but also the, the subs uh, that came on. Meanwhile, Scott or at Moon on the pitch. Fair result, I guess, but I can't help but be disappointed after being go uh, two goals up at Ewood. Again, it, it, it does feel like a defeat, like uh, Talk of Ewood said. And, uh, you know, we've only got ourselves to blame. Um, but but they're, they're at the top of the table for a reason, and you've got to give them credit for that. Meanwhile, Ian Herbert, Wigan won't lose any more playing like they did in the second half. If they run out of steam and play like the first half, then we have a chance. Real winners today are second place Shrewsbury. Meanwhile, Paul John Graham on the book of face said this, Point is a point. We are by far a better footballing side than them, and our goals showed that. Can't keep teams out, though. Nonetheless, I thought we were, on the whole, great today. Fight and grit was there for all to see. I am proud. We don't finish outside the top two. That every week fact. Wah. English. Terrible. Rovers till I die. Meanwhile, Bethany and Fritz Patrick says, Tony been let down big time. Gutted for him. Uh, I'm not too sure if I agree with you there because I think he made the calls. Uh, and again, mentioned earlier about the substitutions. I think they were probably the worst ones. I don't think Nuttall uh, was the right choice up front. And Tonson, fair play. Payne, mm, still juries out on him. Uh, if you wanted something for some pride, stick Craig Conway on there. He'll run his socks off for uh, Blackburn no matter what. John Lee said this, You couldn't fit a fag paper between Rovers and Wigan on head-to-head -head performances this season. But on points per game, clean sheets, an FA Cup run, it has to be said, Wigan are a better side than us so far. I'll take a point. Should have been a win. Couldn't have been a loss. Another game out of the way. Another point closer to the target. Let's smash Blackpool. Meanwhile, on the BRFCS forum, if you've not checked out the forum, make sure you do so. Great opportunity for the chat for fellow Rovers, just like this guy, Big Dog Steel. Tough to take. Their goals were lucky. Our goals were quality. They are battlers, though. I would give them that. Great game to have on Sky. Very entertaining. Probably even better to watch it at Ewood Park if you can get down there. Get down there, boys. Meanwhile, Tony Rover feels sick at the end of watching that. Felt we were the better team, but we've shot ourselves in the foot again. Feels like a defeat. Tom, wish we had Vaughan. He bullied Williams, who was terrified of him. Thought a couple of theirs could have gone, but so could have Evans. No bias from a ref, just another bad one. If Riot didn't do his best steal impression, we would win. Blame ourselves. Meanwhile, Fen Windows said this. We need a Grant Hanley to partner Lenahan. Move Mulgrew into midfield with Bennett. No Evans, no Smallwood, no Whittingham, no Gladwin. Midfield looking really weak. Huge summer if we go up. Big summer if... Still in League One. Meanwhile, LD Rover, our fullbacks are very poor, and any ball into our box causes panic. I have no real issue on any part of our team, but one thing is for certain, trying to defend a lead does not work. Meanwhile, Booth said this, should have been a penalty, shouldn't have sat back at 2-0. That referee should be taken round the back of the stand and put out of his misery. Meanwhile, Micah said this, Raya cost us way too many goals this season, although that free kick should never really been given in the first place. We're going to have shown they are... They are where they are. Uh, two goals that came from virtually out of nowhere. Really disappointing result. We lost the plot after they equalised. Poor subs from Mowbray as well. That kind of killed off the game for us. Meanwhile, DE said this. A fair result in the overall balance of play, you have to say. The referee seemed desperate to help Wigan out in the second half as he assisted their second goal. So job done for him. Ultimately, though, our deficiencies were our undoing. And what a pivotal result for us has now become a pivotal result for Wigan.
Meanwhile, Tom Phil said this, great game, throw it away, but awful ref. He's got it right many times, but Mowbray's use of subs were poor today. They were looking really tired early in the second half and some on bookings. Got to sort that set piece crap out, but we've been saying that for years. By no way a disaster today. You switch off for one second against a good team and get punished. And for my money, they are still the strongest team in this league. Meanwhile, BB Rovers, 2288. Disappointed, shouldn't be getting beat tuna he would in a half. More group poor on first, Raya poor on second, both poor goals. Emphasizes that a few aren't good enough for next year. Williams, Evans, Raya and the NB still make poor decisions, although can sometimes recover his own mistake. But I'm sorry, but Smallwood is a squad player. Terrible today when most of the team looked up for it. He was a passenger. Meanwhile, Husky, predictable and pathetic second half. Ruff went soft and gave loads of soft free kicks to Wigan down our right, which ended up costing Gus. Though there's no excuses for that appalling defending and goalkeeping. Subs were a waste of time too. If only Graham didn't have fitness issues, not all clueless as usual, and pain on far too late. Meanwhile, Simon Garner's 194. Total frustration with that result. We were the better side. One thing is for sure, Wigan won't win all their games till the end of the season, and neither will Shrewsbury. All to play for. As for Doxy, the most disappointing aspect, I don't think Wigan deserved the point. Allied to the fact we were too ahead and coasted makes it hard. A hard one to take. We also play much better than that. The players need to react in the right way from this. It's time to stand up or go hiding. Now the dust has settled, it's our toughest remaining game out of the way. Five points ahead of Shrewsbury and play two more. That's fine, and we see how congestion affects Wigan. Feel demoralizing right now, though. As for one filthy, disappointing not to have won that after being 2-0 up at the break. Especially considering their two goals were completely scrappers compared to our beauties. But I'm not too disheartened. We're going to up there for a reason. And that was possibly the most pressuring uh, game of our remaining fixtures. Despite the demand for three points today, you simply can't underestimate Megan. They are who have been strolling this league. Three points would have been great, but the priority for me today was not to get beat. Automatic promotion is back out of our hands. Another twist. Let's see if we can get it back into our hands. Pronto. So that was the fans' point of view from the online forum. If you've got your own point of view, whack it in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you how you thought the game went and where do we go from here. So let's go around the ground to check on our fellow Rovers who are out on loan. Let's take a look at this guy, Elliot Ward. He started the game for MK Dons in their 1-0 defeat at home to Bristol City. Again, he's just he's just not finding his feet at uh, MK Dons, just like he was at Ewood Park. So a bit of, bit of bad luck for uh, Elliot Ward and a bit of bad luck for MK Dons. But let's take a look at the results as a whole. A lot of uh, fixtures cancelled due to the weather. Jiggling Rotherham postponed. Shrewsbury Peter has postponed. That's a little disappointing for us. Also Bradford Portsmouth. All those games had some sort of sway in the top six. As for the fixtures that went ahead, Walsall 3-0 winners over Southend. Utsimer with a hat-trick. Uh, MK Don, like we just said, lost to Bristol Rovers. Scunthorpe also lost to a revitalised Oldham. And right at the bottom there, Rovers against Athletic 2-2. So that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook if you want to check me out on the go. Links to those platforms in the description below. So it came and went the biggest game of the season. Who were the victors? Shrewsbury Town. That's right, they weren't even playing today. They weren't even playing this weekend. But the draw gives them a good boost. And if they win those two games in hand that they have on us, they will go back to the top of the league. We've got the points on the board. They've got to do all the scrapping. So a lot of fixtures still be played. A lot of games still to be won. And Blackburn Rovers aren't out of this just yet. Next up for Rovers, this is a home match up against GB's Blackpool. Hopefully we can get the better of him at Ewood Park and get our promotion race back on track. Uh, I'll talk more about that match in a special preview episode in about two or three days. Maybe check back Tuesday or Thursday. But anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe,